This is the PixInsight process tutorial for finding chart. You find it in process, render, and finding chart. So besides this tutorial today, I posted a reel, which is another word for a TikTok video on YouTube. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it yet, let's have a watch together. It's only 10 seconds. You might have now two questions on your mind. One is, why did I actually do that? And the answer is, because YouTube tells me this is the future and if I want to be hip, then I have to do reels. And don't we all want to be hip? Anyway, now let's come to the second question, which you might have, and this is, how did I do that? And then I will go like, ah, great that you ask, because that's exactly what we cover in this video. Let's get going. Finding chart is in principle, the same thing as when you walk in a park and you have this you are here maps. So it does not annotate the stars within the picture, but it actually tells you where this picture is in context to the surroundings, which I think is something pretty neat. So let's have a look at the process. So the first thing is the chart size. These charts that finding charts are doing are always square. And at the moment, it's 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. Now in today's world, this is rather small. So I would go to a much larger number. So at least four times as much. But obviously it also depends on the purpose, what you actually want to do with this chart afterwards. The next thing is the automatic chart resolution, which is arc seconds by pixel. And you can leave it on automatic or you can change it manually and we will experiment afterwards what it actually does. With limit magnitude, you can actually select how many stars you want to have on your chart. As a default, it's seven, but also here you can take the automatic off. If you obviously go to a magnitude of 15, then your picture is mostly white. <laughs> Everything is full with stars. And we can also experiment with it afterwards at the moment we leave it around seven. Next thing, generate bitmap file. Here you can, instead of displaying the result here on the screen, you can actually let it create a bitmap file. And I would not suggest you to do that. And I will tell you why. Next thing, we can actually select what we wanna have on the chart from grids to stars to all the names, up to you. And last but not least, for each of these things on top here, we can actually select the color. We have here something by default, but you can do whatever you want. So that's all what you can select here. Now, before we actually throw the triangle on there, a few things. That finding chart is able to do its magic. Your picture has to be plate solved. A month ago or so, this would have still been an issue. How do you do that? Now with the introduction of SPCC, almost everybody knows how to plate solve. It got a necessity. But if you still have an issue plate solving, please watch my tutorial about the image solver script and I will put the link in the description below. Now this is the picture I actually want to include in the chart. Now the issue is that I cannot plate solve that. Sometimes when you when you finished processing because you work on the star, star reduction, stuff like that, it will just not do it anymore, unfortunately. So from that point, what I did, I just took here a stacked picture right from the start, which is actually already plate solved. And I can use that. And I will tell you afterwards why it doesn't really matter that much. So I will now throw the triangle on this one. And here we go. So now this is how it looks like. And when you wonder where are we now, if I actually zoom in here, this square does actually represent the picture and the red dot represents the left upper corner of your picture. And you see we have the constellations and if we zoom in, we have now here also the names of stars, of the constellations, of the messy objects and so on. So there's two things you might want to change now. On one side, you might state that this is just too much property. You want to only cover less of the surroundings. Then you can actually go to the chart resolution and cut it down to, for example, 60. The other thing you can say is that mm, I want to have a little bit more stars. Then you deselect the automatic limit magnitude and you can, for example, go to nine. Let's restart now the thing. Okay, and here it is. And when we compare them now, you see 
that for example here sickness is now much much bigger what unfortunately is not bigger and this is something again i scratch my head why this is not possible are the fonts because that would be now what i would expect that also the fonts i could actually do bigger still with a higher resolution but no fonts stay the same what you also see now that you have much more stars now in the picture than here I think around nine is a good setting where they're not too annoying, not too many, but still it looks nice. So you remember that I told you not to use the generate bitmap file function. Why? Because this generates rather low quality bitmap files. The much better way to do it is once you have actually a map which you want, you activate it and you go to save as, and you save it as a TIFF, for example. And then you have it as a high quality file. You have just much more influence about the format, about the quality, if you use save as instead of this automated function within the process. So what are you going to do with these? On one side, it might be just interesting, for example, in a book. On one page, you have this. On the other page, you have then the picture. But what you obviously also can do with it, and here we come to the beginning again, is a reel. So how did I do that? The first idea that I had was I went to Photoshop and I used this as a primary picture and on a level above I put my real picture and just transformed it down that it fit into this box. And so then I had one picture, the chart here with the real picture inserted and this picture I then transfer to Final Cut and made the zoom. And you actually can see that if you're interested on my profile on Instagram, I posted the reel like that. And it's not good. The issue with it is that the resolution of the picture gets so small in here, or you would have to scale up the resolution of this picture to a ridiculous size where it's not able to handle it anymore. And then I had the idea to do the whole thing in Final Cut. So what I did is, on one layer in Final Cut, I had this picture. And then on another layer, I just inserted the full object picture. And so then I fitted it in and made it smaller. And the good part is if you do it like this, then the resolution of this picture stays preserved. And so with that, I could do a seamless zoom. So I think this is quite a fun process. It's not something you use every day, but if you remember that it exists in the right situation, it's actually quite cool to have this tool to create such a where is this picture map to give the larger context. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and press the subscribe button. Very much appreciated. See you next time and clear skies.